Here's the question of life, at least where I am right now, waking up, uh, waking up, thinking about myself, thinking about life, thinking about my past, my future, my present, trying to live in the moment. And living in the moment requires one thing, I think is what's happening to me, at least. Um, the voice I heard in my head said to me, you know what, Martin, it's time that you demand, not ask, it's time that you demand the best from yourself. Write that down. It's time that me and you demand the best from ourselves, not the best from the world, not the best from friends, not the best from families, but we need to expect the best from ourselves. Who do you owe? Do you owe anybody anything really in your life? No. What you owe is to the universe, to God, to creator, whatever you want to call it, what you owe is fulfilling the purpose in which you were sent. That's it. It's nothing else. That's the bottom line. You can't add anything to it. That is the circumference, the length, the breadth, the width of your assignment is you. So we have to demand the best from ourselves. And during this podcast and in, in this video time, I just want to talk about that. I want to talk about what that looks like. I want to talk about how important it is and the things that you really have to face if this is going to make sense to you, right? So I have about five things I want to talk to you about. Number one, I want to talk to you and say to you, stop trying to control the world. Number one, stop trying to control the world. What do I mean by that? You can't control the world. You can't control what anyone else is doing. You can't control what anyone else is thinking. You, <laughs> you can't control your mom, your dad, your wife, your husband, your kids, your boss. You can't control any of those people. So stop trying. The, the, the effort is futile. Back to the Star Trek days, resistance is futile. Working on someone else or trying to determine what someone else is doing is out of your reach. Um, I, I say these words every day. Some people call it the serenity prayer. Um, uh, I say these words every day, help me understand what I'm in charge of. Help me understand what I can control. Help me understand what I cannot control. But the most important phrase I say every day is show me the difference between the two. You need to know the, you need to know what you can control. You need to know what you can't control and you need a discernment to be able to tell the difference between the two, because the difference between the two spells serenity, peace, harmony, power. It, it spells this, um, this depiction of you being in the center of your life and not floundering on the edges. When you get on the edge of the merry-go-round, when it goes too fast, it tosses you off and you tossed off dizzy. But if you can stand in the middle of that merry-go-round, you don't get dizzy. You just get a worldview of your own life. So find serenity by right now, stop trying to control what you can't. How do I know what I can't control? Is it, is it based on your decision? Is it based on your viewpoint? Is it based on your desired outcomes? Is it based on your dream? The only thing you're responsible for is getting results to your own dream, not living out mom, dads, the world's, the boss, the children, the whatever is attracting your attention, drawing you, stretching you. You have to make a decision. I am not going to try to control the world anymore. You can't control the world. You can only control your world. Your world is your assignment. And let me stay here for a minute. So what about the rest of the worlds around me? What about those important people you just mentioned? What about my job? What about everything else? Listen, never build your life around others' expectations. You, because here's my point. Again, you can't do it. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the bandwidth. You don't have the control over what your boss thinks about you. Yes, do your job. Operate in a way that's kind. Operate in a way that you um, you respect the opportunity. Absolutely. But you can't control it. You can only control you.
As a matter of fact, you are your job. <laughs> your responsibility, your real job on earth is you. We'll get into that in a whole different kind of podcast. But today I'm saying demand more from yourself by don't try to change the world. Don't put a cape on. Don't put a mask on. <laughs> don't, don't, don't take this supernatural persona. <laughs> You're going to change the whole world. Change your world right here. Change your world by the decisions you make. Change your world by your viewpoints. Change your world by deciding how you're going to treat other people. That's it. Stop changing the world. Say it out loud with me. I'm going to stop trying to change the world. One more time. I'm going to stop trying to change the world. I'm going to change my world. What's in my head, what's in my heart, and what's in my hands. I have control over that. Nothing else and no one else. We're clear? So that's number one. Number two, no more excuses. Put a pin on this date that you're listening to this podcast or watching this video or whatever it looks like to you. Put a pin on this date and say, I'm going to, I'm going to have no more excuses. That's it. I didn't say reasons. I said excuses. No more excuses for me. In other words, I'm not going to blame others for where I'm, for where I am. I'm not going to put that responsibility on anything or anyone else. I am where I am. I was born how I was born. I was born a male. I was born a female. I was born with this skin color. I was born in Mississippi. That's where I was put. That's the perfect place for me to become who I am. I was born perfect in the perfect year, to the perfect people, in the perfect situation for me to fulfill my personal assignment so I don't have excuses. This is what excuses do. What an excuse does is it forces you not to change. An excuse forces you not to change. Why? Because if I can say that this is why I'm here, this is what happened, this is what caused it, I never take an introspective look. I never look at myself and ask, what responsibility do I have for these outcomes? If you're playing cards, you don't look at the card deck that you were, the hand that you have and decide to throw it in. No, you don't make excuses. At least you go through the mental, physical, and emotional exercise to play your hand out, right? Because there are things you're going to learn with the hand that you were dealt. And as long as you're living your life, looking at the hand you're dealt and saying, it's not fair. This is not right. I can never get where I'm going because this is the situation I'm living in. That does not work in this world. You are perfect. Again, born perfect, born in the right year, in the right body, in the right time, the right sex, the right gifts, the right talents, all of that. Your right viewpoint in life. You already have that. So now you play your hand. No more excuses, not, not excuses about people, not excuses about circumstances, not excuses about how you're played. Now, now remember this, you can look at your hand, look at what someone's done or look at the disadvantages that you may have and see them objectively, but don't see yourself as a part of it. It's just where you are. And now that tells you which books you should read. It also tells you it also tells you who should be your heroes. Look for men and women that are like you, that figured out how to, to stop trying to change the whole world, but they just decided no more excuses. There are books on famous people, on great people. I, I, I mean, I love lots of them that teach about this. Alan Watts, uh, Martin Luther King. I mean, some, Neville Goddard. The, these are my heroes. These are people, and Frank. These are, these are people who went through something in the circumstance they were in and they had no excuses reasons are different i am here my my place on this mountain is a little bit lower than someone who started close to the top that's just the truth that's reality but it's not my excuse i know my realities i look my realities in the face but i don't make excuses about them this is just where I am, because no matter where I am, there's somebody someplace in the world that's lower than me. That's not using their excuses 
excuses for reasons. Your excuse is not a reason. I think I'm making myself clear. You have to stop. We have to stop making excuses because not only does an excuse, uh, not only does an excuse let us off the hook from changing, it lets us off the hook from seeing ourselves from a perspective of where we should change. So if I make an excuse, I'm not going to look back at Martin and say, you need to change for this reason. You need to learn for this reason. You need to read for this reason. You need to get um, you need to get help for this reason. You need to do it. No more excuses. As soon as I blame someone, I'm making them responsible for my life. And now it's really time for you to take your life back. And the only reason the only way to take your life back is to not have excuses. Don't make your reasons excuses. Am I making sense? Don't make, listen, don't make your reasons excuses because they will hold you back. Right? So number three, you got your notebooks out. Keep writing these down. I want you to earn. I want you to really hear this next one. Forget about everyone else. Soak that in. Forget about everybody else. Forget about everyone. Forget about everybody out there. Forget about targeting, making the players on your team better. Forget about making, uh, forget about making your company's employees better. Forget about making your children better. Forget, forget about everybody and be a little selfish to this point. Why am I saying this? It's really important that you think about this. You know why? Because if I'm focusing on changing the people on my team, I lose focus on changing myself. If, if, if I'm focused on making you better, then I lose track of making myself better. The best thing I can do for the world is to change me. The best thing I can do for the world is focus on me. So let me say this right up front. I am not talking about being selfish in the selfish to the point well, I'm disregarding others. I'm misusing others. I'm misrepresenting others. I'm taking advantage of others. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying forget about everybody else. Say, forget them. I'm just going to focus on my own life. I don't want to ha have anything to do with them. I don't care what happens to them. I have no compassion. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is simply this. How do I serve the world the best? I serve the world the best by simply changing me by focusing on me. If I can focus on my sense of caring, if I can focus on my, my challenge of my outlook and how I see other people, if I can change me and how I see people, I treat them better. Am I making sense now? If I can change how I look at money and now I can make my own money, but now I can also give, I can treat people better. But if I never focus on my own business, I won't be able to help others. So now it's really about forget about everyone else. Change yourself by changing yourself. You help other people by changing yourself. You become a better. How do I say it? You become a better citizen of the country you live in. By changing yourself, you become a better friend. By changing yourself, by focusing on yourself personally, you become a better spouse. By changing yourself and focusing on yourself, you become a better parent. The matter of fact is simply this. Everybody gets better when you get better. Everybody changes when you change. Everybody is excited when you get excited. Everybody's treated fairly when you treat yourself fairly. People don't understand that by neglecting yourself, by not looking at yourself, by thinking about everybody else first, you end up last. And now you're misrepresenting yourself. And everybody knows this. You've been on a plane or you've watched a movie or you've, you've seen something on social media and it goes like this. The, the, um, the attendant on the airline or the stewardess on the airline or the cabin, whatever you want to call them, person on the airline will get on the intercom and say, just in case this particular aircraft loses pressure. If this aircraft loses pressure, let me tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a mass that drops down from the ceiling right in front of you. It's going to drop down right in front of you. Put the mask on yourself first. What does it say next? 
It gives you the reason why you should put the mask on yourself first, because if you have a child or someone that's depending on you on that aircraft, if someone is depending on you on that aircraft, do not put the mask on them first. Forget about them for a quick second. Love them by putting a mask on yourself first. That mask saves the life of the people you love. In other words, the cabin pressure is going to fall. And within a couple of seconds, if you spend time to put the mask on your child first or an elderly person or someone you're responsible for on this aircraft, if you put the mask on them first, you will faint. So they have a mask on. And now what happens when that plane lands? Hopefully it lands, right? Hopefully it lands in some sort of way and everybody's on an emergency and they're trying to get off the plane. Are they going to stop for you? Are they going to stop for your child? Will they stop for your mom or dad that you have on the plane that, that are incapacitated in a certain way, incapacitated in a certain way? Are they? No, they're going to get off the plane, leave you who's passed out and the person you're in care for on the plane. You get what I'm saying? So what they're saying is what I'm saying. Put the mask on yourself first. Learn about yourself first. Forget about everyone else. Get the mask on. That's how we take care of the people we love. That's how we take care of our employees. That's how we take care of our family. That's how we take care of our business. That's how we take care of our classroom. That's how we take care of our sports team. We take care of our sports team be, be, by taking care of ourselves. If I'm playing, if I'm playing on a team, and I don't stay in shape. Who do I hurt? I hurt the whole team. If I'm leading an organization and I don't take care of myself emotionally, psychologically, and physically, if I'm not up on my game in my business, who am I hurting? I'm hurting my team. I'm hurting my business. I'm hurting my employees. If I don't take care of myself first, who am I hurting in my family? I'm hurting my spouse, my, my children, my parents. I'm hurting everyone. If I don't take care of myself first and now I'm taking care of the house that I'm living in, who am I hurting? I'm hurt, hurting my neighbors. I'm hurting their taxes. I'm, hurt, I'm, I'm not making my neighborhood look like it should. So I'm convincing you, I think, finally, put the mask on. Forget about everybody else. Put yourself first and you will be able to take care of all of your responsibilities. That's how this works. That's how life changes. That's how everybody around you eventually feels secure. And let me just say this before I move against it, move, move from this. I know I might be, I might be sharing a, an idea, a concept, a precept that fights against what you've been taught. Let me tell you why most people want you to concentrate on them. They want you to concentrate on this job. They want you to concentrate on their business or whatever you're doing for them. Hmm? They want you to do that. Why? People want you to concentrate on something that they want you to concentrate on because it benefits them. If you use your energy to make them better and they're ignorant to this fact that if you don't take care of yourself, you can never take care of them. If I can't take care of myself, I can never take care of my boss's business. If I don't take care of myself, I cannot take care of my spouse. I'm married to an amazing woman, but if I don't take care of myself, I'll never take care of her. If I don't take care of my own mental health, my own physical health, my own spiritual health, how do I take care of her? I can't. So I have to make myself the, not a, I have to make myself the priority. So from now on, if anything fights you in your head and you're trying to figure out Wow, I need to I need to go away. I need therapy. I need to get a weight trainer. I need to read the right books. I need to invest in myself. Take those opportunities if you love the people around you. Am I clear? I think I am. So the next thing I want you to concentrate on, we've been through stop trying to control the world. There's no more excuses and forget everyone around you. The next one is this, end the war. What did I say? End the war. 
What war am I talking about? Make peace with your past. There's this, um, uh, this looming thing ho hanging over your head, past mistakes, past missed opportunities, uh, past relationships, past investments, past whatever you want to call it, hmm? hangs over your head. It's like a cloud when everyone else is walking around in a sunny day, you have a cloud following you around raining all the time, leads to depression, leads to the oppression of yourself, leads to trauma. There needs to be healing here. And yes, you might need a professional to help you walk through this, but the bottom line is you just got to make peace with your past. You have to make peace with your past. Getting guidance on that journey is a great thing. But at the end of the day, you've got to be okay with the mistakes you made. You, there's one thing you cannot do in this world. You can't go back in time. I know we love the movies about going back in time. We love the ideas of time travel, going back, coming back to you where you are presently and going into the future. I know that's popular, but it's impossible. The only thing you can do is make peace with it. If it was bad decision, it was a bad decision, but it has nothing to do with the decision I can make now or the decisions I'm going to be making in the future. If you made, if you had bad relationships, abuse was there, make peace with it. That happened, notwithstanding that happened. But the question is, what do I do now? And how do I set myself up for the future? Their bankruptcy happened. That happened. That happened. But what do I do now? And what do I do about my future? It's the only thing you can do. So in the war, that war in your head, that war in your head, not only produces uh, depression, but that war in your head, literally physically raises your cortisone levels. Cortisone levels in your body from your brain is puts you in fight or flight mode. So when you can't make peace with your past, Every time that every time something comes up, up about your past, you are now in a place of fight or flight. And let me tell you something about that, that level of cortisone. When it goes above the normal levels, you either fight or flight, which means all of the energy of your mind, spirit, soul and body. It only has two choices. I'm going to muster the will to fight this thing. I'm going to fight into the death. Or I'm going to run from it. That's all your body will help you do. As a matter of fact, in fight or flight mode, your body will either fight or flight. It can't do anything else. It can't process. It can't process your food. It can't process other ideas. It can't process business ventures. It can't process anything that will scale you. It's either going to fight or it's going to fly. So when you get into this place of high cortisone, you get into this place where you haven't made peace and you're still at war with your past. Anything that comes up that reminds you of your past, that's all you're going to be thinking about. When I'm thinking about the last bankruptcy, I can't think about a new business venture. I'm in fight or flight. When I've had a bad, horrible marriage, but now I'm confronted with an opportunity to, 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 to get involved in this amazing man or woman in my life, right? For me, it's a woman. When I see a woman and now, now my, I'm triggered by just even thinking about getting in a relationship with her, I'm either going to fight her or I'm going to fly from her. That's it. I can't even think cognitively about asking the right questions, about spending the right time with getting to know her. And if you're a female, getting to know him, how do I get to know him? I can't do that when I'm still at war with my past. I can't. So you really got to make this decision to be at peace. You have to bring peace to your life in those areas, in the war. Your battle is not against yesterday. Your battle is not about tomorrow. There is no battle because the only thing you should be focused on is today. Be in the moment. Be in the moment because nothing else can be decided. Here's the last thing I, I'll say.
You can have faith for the future or you can have fear of the past and neither one of them counts. All you got is right now. You don't have your future yet and you can't live in your past. It's really about the now in your life. So make a decision right now. I'm going to end the war with my past. I'm done with warring over what happened, what could have happened, what should have happened. I have no excuses and I'm going to walk through this. All right. Now here's the last one. And this one, this one is, is, is just as important as the other five, but it really encapsulates all of them. And here it is. You will never get there. Stop right now. Pause what you're listening to with me. Pause it right now and make sure you write this down. I will never get there. Never. Martin, what in the world are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. The dream, my, my, my favorite book in the whole world is the Bible because I can find, I can find all of these books in the Bible all of them. Every book you'll ever read has something to do with stories, allegories, precepts, concepts, uh, promises, problems that are in that book called the Bible. And I am overwhelmed by this thought process about staying on your journey because there's a verse that says something about Jesus. And it says he began, he began to do He began to do something and to teach about it. He began. In other words, everything, every thought that comes to your mind is the beginning that you may never see. You might not even live to see it happen, but you must begin. You may not see the business become a billion dollar business, but you have to begin. You may not see the marriage that turns into children, but you have to begin. You may not see your body go from 300 pounds to 120, but you have to begin because you'll never get there. As soon as you're 120 years old, you'll have another idea that you may not see come to pass. That's what life is. Life is the beginning and ending of so many things. You will start some things and you'll see them finish. You will accomplish them. You'll celebrate graduating. But toward the end of your life, you won't stop dreaming. You're going to keep dreaming. You're going to keep thinking about what you could possibly do, how you could possibly serve the world. It's going to happen. And you may not see it. You have to think like this. Enjoy the journey, the ups and the downs, because with some things in your life, you will never arrive. You'll never get there. You'll never finish it. You'll pass it on. Other people will get your idea. Other people will love that idea. They'll start to resonate with that idea. But you won't see it. So many things. I love um, I love the story of Disney. Um, His wife, on the day they opened Space Mountain, you should look this up. On the day they opened Space Mountain, um, uh, Walt Disney's wife was there. He was already gone. He was already gone. I mean, literally this man had turned swamp land, turned swamp land into Disney. And the first thing that was built there was Space Mountain. So when they're standing up to cut the ribbon for Space Mountain, uh, the man introduced, and and I'm just thinking about this now, so you can look up the particular names. But the announcer who got up, he said these words. He said, I just wish Walt was here to see this. I just wish Walt could have seen Space Mountain because he dreamed about it. He taught us about it. He built the architectural plans. He worked with bringing millions of, of dirt loads, truckloads of dirt into the swamp to even make it worthwhile to build on. And his wife, Walt's wife, who was still alive, uh, interrupted, walked up to the podium and said these words. Walt was the only person that saw Space Mountain and he's the only person that sees it now. What was she saying? She was saying Walt had an idea for Disney. He, and his first idea was Space Mountain. He saw it 
physically, emotionally, spiritually on the planet Earth. By the time y'all finished it, he still saw it. He may not have seen it on Earth, but he is still looking. He's still he's still uh, watching us. He's still aware. And that's the same way it's going to be with me and you. We're going to see a space mountain. We're going to see it in our hearts. We're going to start it. We're going to start to build it, but we won't see it accomplished on Earth, not physically. So you just got to get real comfortable, very comfortable with one day at a time, enjoying the journey. So what's important to do there? It's important to communicate. Walt Disney didn't see Space Mountain finish, but he did finish the plans. He did raise the funds for it. He did pass on his dream. He did teach other people. He involved other folks with it. And that's the same thing you have to do with the ideas that make the most sense to you that are powerful to you. You need to transfer those ideas. You need to write the plans for it. You need to have people around you who understand that dream and share it. If you can, you need to provide for it, whether that's money, resources, or whatever that looks like. Hmm? Same thing Jesus did, a group of disciples. He taught them, he spent time with them, they understood. It was even funded, his dream. Hmm? The plan was there. And when he left, he gave people power to continue to execute. That's the same thing you are called to do. So I end this by saying, demand the best of yourself. Demand the best of yourself by stop trying to control the world, number one. There be no more excuses in your life, number two. Forget about everybody else, number three. End the war in your head. And lastly, you'll never really get there. All right? So I'll see you guys next time. I'm Dr. Martin Williams, a dream keeper. I know this has been amazing. Share it with your friend, follow on every platform, and let's hear about what comes next.